So when dealing with variance and standard deviation, we can also do a confidence interval with a variance and standard deviation. Okay. On the back side of your T-table, on the back side of your T-table that I handed out to you, you have what is called a chi-square table. Okay, it looks like a big script X. This is called chi-squared. It's a symbol for chi. It's a Greek symbol. Once again, a lot of Greek symbols that we utilize. Really, it's a, a curvy X is your chi. It's a curvy X. But I can do a curvy X with my, with my font. So I just put an X there. This is your chi-squared. Your chi-squared is utilized to be able to give you values to get a confidence interval for your standard deviation. And also your variance. It's chi-squared, but what you'll see is that, the CH. really high. Some are human, some are Americans, and we're hooked on phonics, and if we see CH in there, we're good chai. Not everything is revolving around Americans, and how we hooked on phonics say things. So it's a chi. Chi squared distribution table is a distribution that allows us to calculate the confidence interval for the variance. Dealing with the variance now. And with the variance, we can do standard deviation. So we have our variance and we have our standard deviation. We still have our degree of freedom, n minus 1. Okay, still have a degree of freedom. We have a different value here, though. It's called a C value. It's your decimal equivalent for your confidence interval. Your decimal equivalent for your confidence interval. That's your C value. If you look at your table, you got two values. You got along the top of your table, you have these alpha values along the top. And you have your degree of freedom that goes along the side. You're going to come down to two alpha values. And how we calculate these alpha values are 1 minus C divided by 2 and 1 plus C divided by 2. So we get two alpha values that's going to be along your top. How we calculate them, 1 plus C and 1 minus C, both divided by 2. Now the square term there, don't get confused by that, it just goes into the idea that we're dealing with squares here. Okay, we have a chi squared, we have an alpha squared value, or just an alpha value. You use a degree of freedom and your alpha values to find the chi squared dot values from the table. So your alpha value and your degree of freedom give you a chi squared value. For your variance, for your variance, to calculate a confidence interval for our variance, we have n minus 1, which is your degree of freedom, your variance divided by your chi squared value. This is a table, this here, these here are table values. These are just a table value. It's called a chi-squared table. A chi-squared goes into the idea of the variance. 
because your variance is your standard deviation squared, your sigma squared. That's why you get a squared value there. But you don't square the actual value. These are just the table values that you pull out from the table. So you take your degree of freedom, your variance, divided by your chi-squared table value. Once again, this is your, these values here. Are your sample variances. So you have to pay attention to the verbiage in the problem. Because the verbiage in the problem will give you a sample variance or a sample standard deviation. If they give you the sample standard deviation, you're going to have to square that value. If you can't give you the sample variance, that's the value right there. Because your variance is S squared, your standard deviation is S. Square rooting everything, our confidence interval for our standard deviation. We just square root the value. We just square root the value. Once again, it's important to pay attention to the verbiage in the problem. Because sometimes you'll have to square the, the sample standard deviation, sometimes you will not. Because sometimes it's going to be given you as a standard deviation, sometimes it's, going to, sometimes it's going to be the variance. Take a look at a problem. You randomly select and weigh 25 samples of allergy medicine. The sample standard deviation is 1.2 milligrams. Construct a 90% confidence interval for the population variance and standard deviation. Well, let's take a look. The verbiage of the problem. Sample size is 25. Which means our degree of freedom. Max, what's our degree of freedom? 24, 25 minus one, 24. We have a sample standard deviation of 1.2 milligrams. We have a 90% confidence interval. From the 90% confidence interval, we have to find a C value. The C value is the decimal equivalent to the confidence interval. So if my confidence interval is 90%, Caroline, what's the C value? What's the decimal equivalent to 90%? What, now I answer my question. My question is, what is the decimal equivalent to a, the confidence interval of 90%? You're answering your question that you have in your mind. My question that I'm giving to you is, if I have 90%, 90%, what is the decimal equivalent to 90%? Yeah, see, it helps when you answer my question, not the question that you already have formulated in your brain. Okay, I will guide you to the answer. 0 0.90. We have two alpha values. So we have alpha.
alpha, and I really don't remember left and right. I just look at big and small values. So I have one plus C divided by two, one minus C divided by two. One plus 0.9 divided by two, one minus 0.9 divided by two. So I find two alpha values. Amber, what's these two values? Wait, what's the first one? Point nine five and point zero five. From this, we can get table values. Max told us we have a degree of freedom of 24. Amber's told us we have two alpha values, 0 0.95 and 0 0.05. So I go to my table. I go to my table. And it does not matter which one to do first. Do I go down my degree of freedom first, then over to my correct alpha value, or do I trace my alpha value down? It does not matter. Find two values from your table. One for an alpha value of 0.95, one for an alpha value of 0.05. We have a degree of freedom of 24. We have an alpha value of 0.95, alpha value of 0.05. Nehemiah, what's the two values? Point what? Nine, eight, nine. And point zero five. Point zero five was one. Uh, two point nine seven five. Two point nine seven five. For a degree of freedom of twenty four. Okay. Follow along here. Keep up. Well, keep up. Go to your degree of freedom down to 24. Then go over to the column of 0.95 and 0 0.05. Keep up. For which one? 0 0.05. 0.05. What do you get? 36.415. And point nine five. Thirteen point eight four eight. Thirteen point what? Eight four eight. Are we good with those numbers? All right. So those are our two values. Now the top for this is going to be the same. We have n minus one s squared divided by this alpha value. Now, this is where, like I said, you can go alpha left, alpha right, and remember this, that is fine. I, I don't like to remember too many things here. My tops are going to be the same here. I have n minus one, so we have 25 minus one times s squared, 1.2 squared. 
We have our population variance. And the same is going to be on this side, 25 minus 1, 1.2 squared. Now, this is your smaller value, this is your bigger value. This value here, when I do this computation, this will be a smaller value, this will be a bigger value. If I have the same top, What makes my value smaller when I do this division? When I divide by a bigger number or when I divide by a smaller number? Uh, a bigger number. When I divide by a bigger number, it's going to make my number smaller. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 10 divided by, divided by 2 is 5. So my bigger number has to go over here. That's just using math knowledge. Yes, if you want to remember the formulas, alpha left, alpha right, that is fine. But once again, that's a lot of things to remember to continue to remember. If I just use my math smartness, if I divide by a bigger number, it's going to be smaller. Now what I suggest you do is work yourself down the column here. So take and deal with your division here, find your value, and then take the square root of that value to find this value here. For the standard deviation. So, and do some mental math here. 25 minus 1, 24. Don't sit there and have to go 25 minus 1 equals. Trust your math ability that you can subtract one from it. Times 1.2 squared divided by the 36.415. Hit your enter button. That's your variance. And then take the square root of your answer. That's your standard deviation. Then go to the second set. 24 times 1.2 divided squared divided by Test, if we work down the column, the left-hand side, when I take this divide, what do we get for the variance? Uh, 0 0.94. This is 0.94. And then standard deviation? 2.49. Oh, sorry. 0.97. 0.97. Okay, we're good with those numbers. All right, then we go to the right-hand side and work ourselves down the column over there. Carla, what do you have? 2.5 and what? 1.58. Now, what, we good with those numbers? Now, you need to make one statement and make the statement with the standard deviation. I'm 90% confident. The standard deviation is 
between 0.97 and 1.58. So you can make your statement, you can make your statement just for your standard deviation. It's a, it's a standard statement that we've been making throughout, so you should not have to copy that, you should be able to write it down. As part of his spring break planning, you randomly select 12 hotels in Cancun, Mexico and record the room rates and, camp and calculate the sample standard deviation to be 34.4. Use an 80% confidence interval and calculate the confidence interval for the population variance and standard deviation. What is N equal? Once again, we are given the sample standard deviation, so we're given S here. Sometimes you'll be given the variance. You have to watch. We have an 80% confidence interval. What's the C value? Calculate your two alpha values. Calculate your degree of freedom. Go to your table, find your table values. confidence interval for the variance and then standard deviation. Once again, I suggest you work yourself downward vertically to each side then. Then write yourself a statement. Statement dealing with the standard deviation.
For our variance, Lucas, what do you have for your value for your variance here? And standard deviation? 26.9. And for your upper value? Um, 3,123. You said 3,123? Yes. All right. And then? 55.8. We go with those numbers. And if you're off by a penny or two, don't worry about it. Okay, don't worry about it. Not good with those, Todd? What do you come up with? 3,000 what? For the top one? Is it, are you good with the bottom ones? So you have 3,555, is that what you said? 2,555. Good with that number. What number do we have? Second one. Clickety clack of two again. And then what do you have for the standard deviation, Todd? 50 point what? Okay, 50.5. We go with that number. And then you make your one statement. We're 80% confident. 80% confident. Standard deviation is between 26.9 and 50.5 as your final statement. Okay, what I gave you is a worksheet. Uh, once again, make sure you take a look at. Um, I guess each one I've given you a sample standard deviation, so. Make sure you be careful of the, the verbiage there. Tomorrow will be a review day over confidence intervals. Friday will be the quiz over confidence intervals. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. Next Monday will be a review day for chapter five and six. Tuesday will be a chat, unit test over chapter five and chapter six. Okay, so we have the next four days here are classes that we're gonna have just a bunch of evaluations. So you need to keep up with the material. As we go forward, just keep up with the material. Rest of the time is yours.